seven dollars and thirty four cents yep that was the price just sitting in a junkyard waiting for some kids to find him and find that magical horn that would transform little old slept car into Wonderbug. I've gotten lots of comments on some of my other YouTube videos requesting a Wonderbug video. I knew I was going to do one eventually. Yes, I watched it as a kid and yes, I loved it. But if I'm 100% truthful, there were other Sid and Marty Croft ventures that I loved more. And at the top of the pile, this is the one most of all, for so many reasons. I've made a couple of videos about this show already. I'll probably make at least a couple of more. After Land of the Lost? Well, I've got to point to a couple of other segments in the Croft Super Show that I loved just a teeny bit more than Wonderbug. This was my favorite from the Super Show. I don't really think I have to explain. It's freaking Bigfoot, people. And he's a superhero now. Speaking of superheroes, I love this show too, for all of the obvious reasons. But let's get back to good old Wonderbug. So I've already said I liked it, quite a bit in fact. And it passed the merch test with flying colors. This is just a smidgen of the numerous items available to a discriminating shopper back in the late 70s. Didn't have the game or the lunchbox, but I did have the Viewmaster and my little bro had the coloring book I think. There was also a gold key comic book, if I remember correctly. I seem to recall reading an issue or two. Beyond the merchandise, this show was popular for a reason. It was just fun. They were like 12 or 13 minute episodes, short and sweet, nothing original about it. In fact, the show took its cues from a Hanna-Barbera cartoon called Speed Buggy, as well as Disney's Love Bug movie series. But like I said, it was just plain fun. And the cast had a ton of chemistry. They really seemed to enjoy working with each other. Watching the episodes now, yes I do, many of them can still be found on YouTube. Anyway, watching the episodes now, it's clear that these three actors had no grand aspirations regarding what they were doing on the show. It was a fun way to earn a paycheck and maybe it would lead to greater things down the road. But did it? That's what we're going to find out. Let's start with the actor who played Barry, David Levy. The man with the plan. The brains behind the operation. Not. No. He never was. On the show, Barry wasn't the sharpest knife in the drawer, but in reality, David Levy, he's gone on to be razor sharp. I think his Wikipedia page says it all. David has become a well-known, highly acclaimed psychologist. So much so that it's possible that if you were a family member, have taken a college-level class in cultural psychology, you may be using his textbook. I guess he really is the brains behind the operation now. Moving on to C.C. McNamara, played by John Anthony Bailey. Prior to Wonderbug, you may remember episodes of M.A.S.H. and Happy Days with a familiar face in it. Post Wonderbug? Well, John Anthony continued to find work and pretty much took whatever offer came his way. Some of those offers were for movies of a more adult, well, theme. I guess that's the best way to put it. But John Anthony, he took pride in all of his efforts. It was a good, honest, hard day's work. I use past tense with John Anthony because unfortunately he is no longer with us. He passed away from bladder cancer at the all too young age of 47 in 1994. And what about beautiful Susan? The underappreciated true brain behind every awesome plan that was ever devised on the show. Actress Carol Ann Sefflinger most recently was seen in an episode of Lakayam L.A. playing a character named Aunt Dahlia. That was in 2013. Looking at Carol Ann's IMDb page, it's clear that she's had a very busy career as a child actor before Wonderbug, and it looks like she may have very purposefully taken time away to focus on herself afterward. After Wonderbug, in fact, it looks like she starred in a 1978 movie called Sweater Girls, and then you don't see anything there until 2006 where she made an appearance in a movie called The Bed Stand. That's a heck of a lot of time between projects. I hope that she has been able to live the life that she wants. Well, that's the kids. At least as much of an update as I can find. Let's do one more. Good old Slepcar. Truly the heart of the show. Not that grandstanding show-off Wonderbug. Well, actually, both cars were voiced by veteran actor Frank Welker. 
He's a voice actor, in fact, and his list of accomplishments, well, it's just too darn long to cover here on this short video, but let's just say Frank, who was the original voice of Fred on Scooby-Doo, continues to do great work to this day. I noticed that he was the voice of Batmite in an episode of Batman the Brave and Bold not too darn long ago. This guy is pure talent. Let's hope we get to continue to enjoy his work for a long time to come. So that's it. Did you enjoy Wonderbug? Was it your favorite part of the Croft Super Show? Or did you have a different favorite like I did? Let me know what you think in the comments section below and while you're at it, I'd love you to click on the thumbs up icon and I would be honored if you would consider subscribing to my channel. I talk about music, movies, and television mostly from the 60s, 70s, and 80s. You know, the good stuff. But most importantly and as always, thank you so much for watching.